Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on some DC, well, it is DC TV stuff, and but on the animation side. But we, of course, have this new DC Universe reboot coming our way as early as the end of this year with Creature Commandos. Now, this, of course, is under the guidance, in part, of James Gunn, who, of course, is directing Superman, like new movie, as we speak, which, of course, is the first film in this new DC Universe coming our way. But one thing that we know that will still be a thing going on or going forward though the vast majority of projects will be under this new canon of this new DC universe, is that of Elseworlds projects, whether they are adaptations of Elseworlds comics that already exist, or just stories and worlds that, that warrant being explored, but exist outside of the canon that James Gunn and Peter Safran are working on. Those existing in both the film and TV landscapes, both across live action and animation. Now, one of these possible Elseworlds projects is actually something that was in the works, or at least talks were going on before the shakeup with DC and its leadership, which led to James Gunn and Peter Safran being the new go, uh, the new co-heads of DC Studios. But this project is still alive and not dead, at least in the discussion side of things, and just sort of like working out a plan of attack. And that is the animated Smallville like reboot or sequel series, whichever way you want to word it. Now we had heard of this about, I think a year or two ago initially, like probably somewhere like in the in the middle of those two and it was between Clark and Lex themselves Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum where the talks were sparked and we knew there was backing from a good amount of people from the original show both in front of and behind the camera but now we have another update you know after that year or two and this is via an interview with uh, that Michael Rosenbaum did with Screen Rant so we will single out that question in particular and the interesting answer that is given which maybe gives some insight into the better position the show might be in now compared to before due to prior relationships that now exist in a higher position within DC. Something that I know many wonder about is the potential of the show coming back. We know you and Tom spoke a year or two ago about this, but you guys were developing uh, you know, a Smallville animated series with the cast and creators. We know last year the strikes probably forced it to get on pause, but is there any update you can provide us with? All I could share is that it's a great idea. We have Al and Miles, the creators of Smallville, backing us up. When it's the right time, we'd like to go and do this. Pitch to Warner Brothers. It has to be the right time, and right now is not the right time. We had the strike. We had a change of executives at DC, one being one of my best friends in the world, James Gunn. When the time's right, I think it's something that's a no-brainer, unless they have other ideas. We'd like to do it. The whole cast would like to do it. They would voice their own character from the show, and we have a concept of what the show is. So that's a really interesting reply and really gets your brain ticking going, hmm, okay, well, could this happen going forward? And, you know, I'll give my sort of, I guess, overall thoughts on that question at the end, because we'll talk about some other elements to all this. So the first thing I really want to point out there, which I think is a big thing that's different from before, when they were talking about it, like what, two years ago, or whatever it is. And that is that James Gunn connection. I think it'd almost be like a bit naive to ignore that thing there. Like that the connection with James Gunn now that Michael Rosenbaum has, I think it's a really solid thing for this show. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get over, get over the line. Like there's way more work that has to be done to get over the line. There's also other factors outside of James Gunn uh, to get it over the line as well. But does this help the show get going if they really have a good plan and everyone's on board? Hell yeah. Like, as I said, it doesn't get it over the line at all, but it's definitely better. It's, it's, it's definitely a positive compared to a negative. So I think if, you know, as I say there, and they also say it's not the right time. Like they're, you know, they're, they're biding their time when they're sitting on it. They're letting it, you know, they're preheating the oven. They're mixing the ingredients. And when it's the right time, the oven's preheated, then you chuck in the, the cake batter and stuff like that and hopefully get a good cake and you don't burn the goddamn thing. But that's the thing they're waiting for. And that's the thing. Time, you know, that's, that's, that's what has to happen there. So I think that James Gunn connection there is a really big positive but it's also like they've got Superman stuff going on with that movie and stuff. This is a Superman project. So you don't want to really want to get in the way of that. So it wouldn't surprise me too much if like the talks happen again in like maybe like just over a year from now, once like that whole Superman thing is done. Now, one other big question there is, you know, and Michael Rosenbaum sort of like hinted it there. They go like, they're going to voice their own character from the show and we have a concept of what the show is. So what is the concept? What would this reboot slash sequel series, whichever way you want to word it, what would it be about? Like, where would it pick up? And I think there's probably like three options. Like, like they they, they could have they could have a wild concept for what it's going to be. But in my head, I'm thinking there's probably like three decent options. The first one is a pretty simple one, and you just play off the end of the show. Like, you just play off. It doesn't mean like you start literally where the show ends. That's where you pick up. But maybe maybe pick up like 
a few months later or a year later or something like that. That's where you play at the end of the show. Sort of in the vein of those Series 11 comics that they released that they, that went on for like a, a few years, I think, those Series 11 comics. I didn't read any of them, but I just remember they went on for a few years and they were pretty popular, which obviously were just set in the Smallville universe, but it was like when he's properly Superman, you get characters like Batman and all of them coming in. There's a proper Justice League, all that stuff. They could really play off that. And it doesn't mean you have to adapt those comics, but it's sort of in the same vein. And, you know, you can treat those comics as like a bit of an offshoot while this sequel series is canon and sort of plays into the same idea. The other option is like you just catch up to the current day that we're in. So it's like, what, I guess depending when the show comes out, let's say it comes out in three years. So it's about 16, 17 or so years from where we were back when Smallville ended. And I think that's a decent idea as well because you let the characters age with the way you want to do it and everything like that. Now, a lot of people are going to bring, well, hold up, in Crisis, I don't know, in Crisis Infinite Earths on the CW, they did the whole thing there, but that was just a way to include and sort of like allow the characters to do what they want to do. It, we know that's not canon. We know that's not canon. We can make that just a very mirrored Earth of whatever Smallville was on. You know, you're not going to base that as canon. So that would be an interesting way to do it as well and just see what that world is like at that point. But I think that's also like, it's so far removed from the original series. You probably want it a bit closer. And that's probably where you meet the middle ground in the next Doctor, which is the final one. And maybe it's just like a handful of years after the end of the show where it allows the characters to build up on their own things where you haven't established Superman on this earth and you haven't established other characters and even what Lois Lane is doing and blah, blah, blah. But it also allows you to build up other parts of the world with other characters, whoever they might want to be. We'll mention a few in a minute, but just those other parts of the world and even like Lex Luthor is a character as well. So I think that's probably the better one. Like it's like, it's not too far, like 15, 16, closer to 20 years in the future, but it's also not straight after the series ended. It gives you a bit of breathing room, but it's also familiar at the same time. I think that's a really good middle ground to meet. Now, one other thing that's um, that Michael Rosenbaum mentioned is like, you know, the cast would come back, you know, the whole cast would like to do it. They would come back and voice their own characters. And we'll mention them in a second who, you know, else they could bring back from the show outside of the main players. But will they include other characters that were not in the show, but maybe even someone that might have shown up in those series 11 comics or just someone that they wish they could have done in the show, but weren't able to do for it. So for a big example, like the bat in the room, if you want to put it, Batman, like Batman is a character that they just weren't allowed to use. There was like the thing where they were potentially going to be allowed to use Batman on Smallville and they just never were allowed. This show in animation, it'd given them the opportunity to have a Batman in the Smallville universe and they can cast whoever they want to do. I think that's a really good option there. Smallville was allowed to use a lot of characters. So there's a lot of characters, there's not many characters that, that they weren't allowed to use. A lot of them are those Bat family members. So you could have a Robin, you could have a Nightwing, etc. show up. Um, even like a, you know, but even then there's elements of the Birds of Prey, but you could have like whatever they want to do. It's really those Bat characters, those Gotham based characters they weren't allowed to use. So those are the ones that they could really have fun with. They weren't allowed to do on Smallville. But then there's other characters that weren't the main players in the show, but also appeared on the show that could come back. So I guess members of like the, like the proto Justice League and things like that that were there. So I think I think you'd count Green Arrow as a main character on Smallville because he was like in the titles and stuff for a lot of the seasons. But even like the characters like Aquaman and stuff like that, the Flash, um, and just other little minor characters here and there that you could bring back and they could do the voices of. But obviously you want to focus on those main characters that were there that really make up Smallville if you want to put it. So those are the main ones that they'd be aiming to get back if they do this. Um, though I think, didn't like, I think the guy that voiced Cyborg in Justice, uh, not Justice League in Smallville, I think he might've passed away. So I think this, like this, there is some people that have passed away and everything like that, that, you know, it might be a bit harder. Oh, well, obviously it's going to be a bit harder because they're not with us anymore. So they'd have to recast or just not include the character, but just sort of depends how they want to handle it once they get to that point, if they get to that point, and if they include those characters. Now, are there any things going against it? Are there any things going against this show being a reality outside of just people saying no? And the only thing I can see is, like, the only thing I can see on the negative side in regards to, like, them pitching it and the response to that is the studio maybe thinking that no one would watch it. There's not much of a fan base there to take a specific branch of a property and then bring it back in this form. But I think Smallville as a show... Though you don't necessarily see loads of people talking about it from time to time because it is removed. Like it's, I mean, it finished, what, 14 years ago, like 13 years ago, whatever it is. So it is still far removed from when it ended. 
But I think it's it's cross generations from the people that watched it when it aired, you know, through the teeth, uh, 2000s and then it ended in 2011. Now to the younger people that watch it now, like I think it's on like Amazon Prime, you know, so it, like, and obviously it was on Hulu for ages, but I think now it's on Amazon Prime, especially in like international locations. So people are watching it and like people want stuff to watch. So it's a 10 season show. So if you're going to start it, you're probably going to keep watching it and everything like that. So people learn to know these characters. So if it's well advertised enough, and then like there might be the thing where let's say the animated series ends up on HBO Max, HBO Max can get the rights to put Smallville there, and then that's its promotion in itself. It's like, oh, we have the sequel series coming, watch the original series, and people like that nostalgia, so you get like the 2000s music and the style and everything like that. So that's something that you could easily work in to bring it up. So I think the fact it's crossed the generations, we have the younger people watching it now, I think it would have decent viewership or at least enough of a decent viewership to warrant doing it. So I don't think there's too much going against it, especially if you're not making it like a 20 episode thing. Let's say it's an eight to 10 episode animated miniseries. I think it's worth the investment, in my opinion, at the very least. I liked Smallville. I watched it when it was on. You know, I was one of those people that watched it as it aired, you know, week to week and stuff like that. It's not my favorite DC animated, uh, DC like TV show, but I'd love to see this and revisit it a bit of a nostalgia there and i haven't really touched smallville since i did a rewatch like i think it was like between arrow season one or two or seasons two and three of arrow where i watched all of smallville again i had the theme song stuck in my head for ages but I'd, I'd probably go back and watch a decent amount of the show if i knew this show was coming in this animated form um so you sort of cross your fingers because of that and hope it happens because i think the idea sounds pretty cool but yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you could drop a like and it shows support. Let me know in the comment section down below. Would you want to see this Smallville like reboot sequel series? Would you want to see it in animation? Let me know. And if you have any ideas for storylines as well, let me know in the comment section as well. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.